Lone Pine, California, August 5th, 1975. This tape will be entitled, The Case Against Adversaryism, and is designed for the convention to be held on August 10th of this year. As we look across the universe, as far as we can see it and understand it, <clears throat> as we look across our own world, considering the various kingdoms, the mineral, the vegetable, the animal, and as far as we know the history of mankind, and even as he functions today, the principle of force occupies the sovereign position. Long ago, the Greek philosopher Heraclitus noted this fact of the predominance of force as the sovereign determinant in nature, as the first stasis of nature. But he noted a second fact that there is the principle of reason that can achieve sovereignty in place of the sovereignty of force, and that this was a second stage in the evolution of mankind. Aurobindo, in his essay on Heraclitus, concurs with him so far, but he affirms that there is a third principle, which he defines as the principle of the divine Ananda, that can ultimately be the sovereign principle governing man. And through the primacy of man become more and more the principle which governs in all of nature. I would suggest here that we might also view the principle of compassion as defined in the voice of the silence, as that which tends to bring about harmony in all things, as an alternative view to that of Aurobindo. Perhaps the two views could be combined and united in one whole. Now as we look at the history of mankind, we find indeed that there is a growth of the principle of reason which has developed along with the principle of force, and that as the principle of reason becomes stronger and stronger through science and philosophy, it tends to become more and more determinant. But, there is a great lag on the human level 
so that while one portion of humanity is oriented to the principle of reason, another connected primarily with the governments of the world is more largely still oriented to the principle of coercion. Now the thesis which I present here is in part this that in the age of atomic power adversarism is a retention of a principle of force that is incompatible with this unlocked power. It therefore becomes necessary that the principle of determination by being adversaries should be replaced by the next step in the evolution, namely the universal replacement of force by rational determination. This would mean that in all of the various conflicts of interests, there would not be the employment of force or violence to accomplish the results, but rather the working out of formulae for the adjudication of relative interests. Consider now the three dom potentially dominant principles of Force, reason, and of Ananda, compassion. And let us suggest the guiding principles in each case. I think we can see rather clearly that in the case of determination by force, the guiding principle is hate and anger. In the case of reason, it is orientation to truth. And in the case of Ananda compassion, it is orientation to love and peace. It makes a great deal of difference which principle rules. Hate and anger are qualities that no doubt can be productive in their way. They can arouse considerable energy, in some cases even a supreme effort. But the direction which this takes is towards darkness and ultimate death. It involves the manifestation of the very worst features in human nature. No doubt, in the concrete situations of our conflicts, the quality of hate, anger, may be modified by reason of the fact that human beings are a com complex 
of many motivations. Few are wholly dark in their motivation. But the dark element is present here and stains ultimately any good motivation that may be underlying the use of force. One cannot serve light, truth, and goodness by vicious means without denigrating the ultimate effect into a quality that is dark and evil. One of the most serious heresies ever advanced by man is the heresy that the end justifies the means. The means employed will ultimately determine the end in, pro in what is probably major degree as Emerson noted when he said the end is resident in the means. The principle that the end justifies the means is a dark and evil principle. The means employed may well be more determinant of as to the result than the theoretical purpose that in the mind of the one who employed these means. Good ends cannot be achieved by dark and evil instrumentation. No doubt to bring about good effects in this sordid world. Suffering may be unavoidable, but there's a world of difference between imposing suffering upon others in order to effect change and imposing suffering upon oneself to effect that change. The latter is the way that was followed by Mahatma Gandhi. One need not be ineffective as Gandhi proved so well. He, by applying to himself the principle of self-suffering, was a prime force in effecting the independence of India. I have no doubt that determination by force will be a factor in the life of this world for some time to come. But what I am urging is that we take the attitude of disparaging this principle as the determinant one. That we cease to heap honors upon those who operate by the principle of force or adversaryism. We should not honor the athletes who operate through the principle 
of determination by force, nor the military mind. We should look upon all of this as an expression of primitivity. In this connection, my thought goes back to something that I learned in high school days in the study of ancient history. It was at the time of a Persian incursion into Greece. I think it was under the king known as Xerxes. He advanced up to the Hellespont and had to cross that barrier to enter Greece. So he started to the crossing of his troops in boats. But a storm came up, and masses of boats were wrecked and soldiers lost. He was so angered that he ordered his remaining troops to take whips and lash the waves, since they had presumed to act counter to his will. This is a supreme expression of the irrational, force-oriented spirit. One masters nature by understanding her laws and by acting in accordance with them. And this is a rational approach. <clears throat> the orientation to compassion can arouse as intense an effort as any other motivation whatsoever, and indeed may do more than any other motivation could arouse. The great effort put forth by the Blessed One, Gautama Buddha, towards the handling of the problem of humanity was not aroused by the force of adversarism, but by that of compassion. So I say unto you, orient toward this principle, and reject, as far as is possible, and in all relations, the principle of adversarism or war. <laughs>